So in 2017, at the height of my youth, I went out and chucked some 75,000 shillings. That is $750 at that time. And I got this thing, which is now dead, the S8. Why have I, in 2021, not gone out and picked up the S21, which is $799 for the best S21? That is basically $800. Why have I decided to go with this Realme 6? Let's find out why in 2021, you probably don't need to spend anything higher than $200 to get a smartphone. This Realme 6 has cost me $200 as it were. Actually, I've paid 26,000 Kenyan shillings for it. And so it sits squarely in what would be called the mid-range price bracket for 2021 standards. I have with me today some three primary arguments that I think if you put into consideration, you'd probably go with a phone like this, a mid-range phone, rather than a high-end flagship phone like this Samsung Galaxy S8. And my first argument is that you probably don't have that much money. The reason is not the pandemic that has probably made you less rich than you are in 2017. The point I'm putting across here is that it's not really a question of cost as much as it is a question of value. What do you get for your money if you dump some $800 to $1,200 for a phone in 2021 compared to $200 or so? dollars? The first thing to note is that a smartphone is a depreciating asset and you expect that the $1,000 or so you'll have put into your phone in the next one year at most will be slashed down to less than $500. In fact, sometimes even up to $300 in terms of value. Case in point, a few days ago when I was doing some research to get a phone, I found out that I could get this exact phone, my dear beloved Samsung Galaxy S8, new and unopened in a box at the exact same price, about 26,000 shillings that I'd buy this Realme 6 phone. In fact, once more, I even considered getting the same phone that I had, the S8. Interesting, right? Because I bought this thing in 2017 for 75,000 shillings. So 50,000 shillings that if I bought some Bitcoin in 2017 would have probably made me a millionaire was dumped into this S8 and it's now nowhere to be found. That is depreciation for you. So yeah, if you have the money, you can always get it, you know. I had the money in 2017. That was disposable income back then. You know, I was a youth without any much responsibilities and that was money I could spend. Another thing to note when it comes to value when you talk about smartphones is the law of diminishing returns. If there's something that this category of tech products suffers from the most is this idea that we could call diminishing returns. Basically, if we do a curve of, say, price, on the y-axis and features on the x-axis or vice versa. The more you pump in money into a phone, the more features you get out of it. But that quickly flattens out at some point, And I think that sweet spot is around 20,000 shillings or $200 as at now. The amount of features you get for additional dollars is very minuscule that it's probably not worth it. As an example here, the main differences between this Realme 6 and say the Galaxy S21 Ultra that costs a thousand dollars more would be probably a little bit of a better screen and it doesn't mean that this screen is bad that one is a bit better you know a little bit of a better camera and it doesn't mean that this camera is terrible it's just that that one is a bit better you see the point is with the S21 you don't get five times better features than you'd get over here for example the second greatest argument, in my opinion, that would tip you towards a mid-range smartphone like this one is the fact that all those flagship features that always come with such phones always trickle down to these phones. All you need to do is wait. It's always a matter of time. It's never a question of if, it is a question of when. Tiny bezels, for example, when they started getting into phones, they definitely debuted with the flagships like the S8s, the Notes, and so on. And in a year or so, you can see how such a phone that costs only $200 also has tiny bezels. The hole punch selfie camera, for example, came with the top of the line Samsung cameras. Here we are in about a year or so. 
we have a hole punch selfie camera over here another example is high refresh rate screens as always that dropped with the flagship models but right now even this realme 6 screen has a 90 hertz refresh rate so it's basically just a test of patience do you feel like if you did wait for say a year or so to get some of those features what would happen to you would you get sick would your cow stop producing milk what would happen to you so in most cases the features that actually differentiate the flagship phones from the mid-rangers are usually just a few performance features this realme 6 for example has a helio g90t which is built on a 12 nanometer process while the s21 you know has a 5 nanometer processor which is a bit faster and by the way in as far as memory and storage is concerned interestingly even these mid-rangers usually get quite a high amount for example this realme 6 has 8 gbs of ram and 128 gbs of storage while this s8 had 3 gbs of ram and 64 GBs of storage. So yeah, you can see that we have much more with the cheaper phone compared to the more expensive phone. So yeah, when you run those benchmarks and 2.2 two gig bench and so on, you'll always get the flagship phone scoring a lot of points compared to these mid-rangers. And let me tell you one thing, let's not those benchmarks fool you. According to me, the most important specification of a phone that is nearly never discussed in any platform is the user experience. The kind of experience the phone will provide you, in my opinion, is always much more important than what points it will score in Geekbench or Antutu or all these other places. I can guarantee you that opening Facebook on this realme 6 versus opening facebook on the galaxy s21 ultra will probably be less than an eighth of a millisecond faster on the more expensive phone but the experience of literally just you know scrolling around and doing your thing will basically be similar if you're a gamer maybe you might get a bit of a smoother playback with the more expensive phone but the overall experience, especially considering factors like a higher refresh rate screen on a mid-range phone and so on, is usually more or less the same. And however much of a power user you are, most times with the flagship phones, you will pay for much more than you actually need. There will always be so many features that you'll probably never use that you actually paid for. These phones are mostly just a portal for applications. They are mostly just a way of opening apps, you know. So yeah, for a flagship, you might get a better unboxing experience. You might get a better build quality, you know, the wow factor. It feels nice in the hand. But again, I would no longer go for a 100% glass phone like this flagship S8 because, you see, glass is glass and glass breaks in the words of jerry rig everything you can see how much i've lost on this phone with a ton of cracks and so on all the way to the back all corners so yeah it happens this is what you pay for when you buy a piece of glass and that sums up my third argument for these budget mid-range phones as opposed to these flagship phones practicality you know in our setting you want something that you might use with not much fear of dropping it and crashing it not much fear of losing a lot if someone decided to keep it safely for you with a ton of battery life. This Realme 6 gives you some 4,300 milliampere hours while this S8 would give you only 3,000. And yeah, I used to hate the fact that I would never really be able to go a whole day with this S8 while I see that this Realme is now at 85% while I've been using it for several hours already i'm very confident that i can go a whole day no questions asked with the realme compared to the s8 and so yeah this is 2022 and they say that good phones have become cheap and cheap phones have become good make a decision wisely that is it from me for today thanks a lot for watching as always if you're not yet subscribed feel very welcome to the family go somewhere under this video and crash that big old subscribe button and if you found value in this video, please just like it. Comment down below. I would like to hear your opinions. Would you go for a high top of the line phone in 2021? The iPhone 12s of this world or the S21s of this world? Or would you go for, you know, 
a budget mid-range phone. See you guys in the next one and as always... No pressure.